Hi everybody, it's starting to snow. You know what that means. Snowball fight! Incoming! <laughs> Welcome to Fiddle Sticks and Stitches. I'm Fiddle. Today's projects are dishes and a bellows. As always, link to materials is in the description box below. We're going to start with the dishes first, and we're going to need all of the odd little trash bits that I told you about. Also, markers if you want colored dishes. If not, then you just need your cold porcelain clay. I decided that I wanted to match my bowls with my kitchen, so I used green, blue, red, and yellow. You can use any type of coloring methods you would like, from markers to paint, food coloring even, and you can use it before, after, and during. So, I mean, it's really versatile in how and where you choose to color it, so it's completely up to you. I did probably about a palm-sized ball of clay for each color, and this was enough for each dish that I made. To color the clay for my dishes, I used alcohol markers and basically colored the clay and then bunched it up and then colored it and bunched it up and repeated the process until I had the color that I wanted. I will say that it will get darker a little bit when it dries. And what I keep dipping my finger in is lotion. Don't use water with this clay, that will make it shrink even more. Use lotion when it starts to dry out. We also would be using it as a release for our little homemade molds. After you get it all mixed together, grab a inch size pinch and put the rest of it in a grocery bag. But make sure that if your grocery bag has any type of print on it, you do not put that against your clay because the imprint will come off and it will dye your clay whatever color is on the back. I learned that lesson the hard way, unfortunately. Next, we need to roll out our clay. Usually, a roll of thumb of clay is thick as a ruler. So, if you were to lay a ruler on each side of your rolling surface, you would only go down as thick as the roller is off of the table, if that makes sense. But, because we are working in miniature, that rule can't apply here, so it's really just about how it feels and how thick you want your plates to be. I would say no more than an eighth of an inch thick. Next, we're going to take some lotion and rub it all over the inside of our orange juice container lid. This is going to be the mold for our plate. And if you actually just wanted to use the orange juice thing as a lid, go for it. I thought about it, but I didn't want orange, and plastic can sometimes be a pain in the butt to color. After you get your lotion in the mold, put your clay on top of it and use your thumb to press down, but don't press down too hard because you don't want to really change the thickness of your clay. You just need to remove the air bubbles and get a little bit of shape in there. Remember to put lotion on the top, orange juice container lid, I forgot to do it there, but it still did release. Sandwich the clay in between them and use something to trim the edges. I use just a clear piece of plastic. I've used it for a while and it works perfectly. Try your best not to tear the clay as you're going. You want to try to make sure that you are cutting it. But after you are done cutting, take your fingers and smooth around the edges. And if it still seems to be a little too thick, you can mash it together a little bit and cut off the excess if you need to. Allow for 24 hours dry time for each piece. For the plate, leave it sandwiched for the first 8 hours, then remove the top piece and leave it dry for the rest of the time. If you try to pull it off before the center is dry, it'll warp and you don't want that. The next pieces we're going to be working on are the bowls and you'll want to start just like we did before by rolling out the clay to same thickness. Side note. This is why I consider clay tools a loose term, because I use lots of weird things to make things. Anyway, you'll need your rings, cookie cutters if you have them, two inch first, and we're going to be using the bubblegum machine bubble bottom. I'm going to call it dome so that way I don't have to keep saying that. <laughs> first you want to cut out your clay with the ring and then lotion the top of the dome. 
pull your clay out of the circle and if you have any funny edges you can pull them off or smooth them down either way or you can sand them off at the end. Center your clay on the dome and slowly press it down and around onto the dome so you start to get that bowl shape that you want. As you start to press it down the edges may start to wave on you. That's okay but I will say that if you have any points like there the first thing you want to do is get all of the sides down around it before pulling that piece off because you want to bring all the clay, the excess clay, to one central point on the edge, cut it off, and smooth it out. So that way you don't have multiple of these little spots where the clay gathers. The more of those spots you have, the wrinklier the edges of your bowl will be. And the deeper they are, the harder they are to get rid of. So you really want to try to avoid the wrinkling as much as possible. But going back and forth with flat surface tools will eventually get them out. Next you have to take a clay tool and go around the upper edge so you can make sure that your bowl will be a straight line all the way around. And I don't think a single one of mine are actually spot on. I did not add a base base to this but I did mash down a divot so that way the bowls would sit flat. If you wanted to you could roll out a snake of clay very thin and small and just put around where the indent is. After you get it looking the way you want it, do not remove it, leave it attached, and set it aside to dry for 24 hours. If there's any discoloration after that 24 hours, leave it dry till the collar is the same all over. Prep your clay as we have the previous times before, using the smallest ring you have this time, and the smooth bead. Add your lotion and we're going to do this just the same as we did the other pieces. I will suggest putting it over the smooth area, not over the hole of the bead. To give you the surface that you want, it will help us hold on to the bead while we're working with it. And it helps in the end when you go to finally pull it off of the mold. The process here is the same as it was before, but you shouldn't have as many wrinkling issues this time as it should just be able to fit smoothly and you shouldn't even have to pull any clay off. I did restamp the center of this one because I had it way off. To reset the clay if that happens, just use your finger and pat the circle back out to the shape that it was and try again. Set it aside to dry for 24 hours and next we're going to move on to the coffee cup. We will need the cone mold for this and don't forget to put the lotion on it. Use about a pinch of clay, roll it into a ball, and slowly push it down onto the cone mold. Trying to apply even pressure all the way around so the wall thickness is as close to the same as it can be. Now it's time to make the handle, and I did that by rolling out a very thin snake of clay and cut it at about half an inch long. Use just a spot of Elmer's glue towards the top and towards the bottom of the cup. These are the points where we're going to smooth down the clay to attach the handle. Using the glue as a softener and your clay tool, you can dab the clay to where it blends in. Use your finger to set in the bottom part of the handle and your cutting tool to cut off the excess. Then blend the end just as we did the other one. Press the base down on a flat surface to give it a flat bottom and then use your tool to make sure that the rim of the cup is straight all the way around. Add it to the drying collection and we can move on to the bellows. You'll need your pattern for this and go ahead and cut out all of your pieces and sand your wood down until it's in shape. Take the rounded end of one of our wood pieces and stick it through one of the slits that we cut on our fabric. 
then use some sort of glue. I use tacky glue to glue down the oval tab. Then, following your curved edge like you would if you were sewing, glue the fabric all the way down to the squared end of your wood piece. I used super glue, but be mindful of what your fabric is made out of because it may dissolve it. Once one side is done, flip it over and do the same process to the other side, following along the same way. Next you need to make the cone shape, and I did that using just the sharpened point of the pencil, and then I used baking soda and super glue to hold it together. For the needle threader, I used my pliers and folded down just a bit of the sides so it would wrap around the piece of aluminum. I used the baking soda super glue mix to hold the two metal pieces together. Then I used E6000 on the back side of the needle threader alone, not on the other side, to glue the whole thing together. With only one side being glued down, the bellows actually functions. You can squeeze it. If you wanted to go ahead and put a, another needle threader on the other side, you could, but it would no longer move if that is a goal. I liked the idea of it being able to move, so I only did it to the one side. And I painted the other side completely black so it looked a little bit better than the fabric and wood the way it is. Mine will be hanging on a wall, the back side didn't matter as much. And with that, it brings us to the end of our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe, it helps me out a lot, and I'll see you next time.